Hello, good people. I'm Dimitri, and today's Steel Series is launching their new Arctis Pro line of headsets. They're PC and PS4 compatible. I have the game DAC and the wireless versions in house, but there's also a standalone Pro version. And today, I want to mainly focus on the game DAC edition and spend some more time with the wireless one and deliver my thoughts on that later. Finally, an ultra slim body keyboard with mechanical red or blue switches, designed and perfected for work and play. The Tesoro Grim XS evolved to fit right in. Check it out below. Okay, so it is clear that SteelSeries is trying to target the slightly higher-end consumer base within the gaming industry because of the price. So the Game DAC edition costs $249, while the wireless one sells for $329. But also because this is their first high-res audio certified gaming product. This is a certification that is done through the Japanese Audio Society. It means that the drivers can reach 40 kilohertz or above and capable of delivering 24-bit 96 kilohertz for the entire system, so for the interface and the DAC. And I think the certification badge is a good marketing move to like separate themselves from this perception that gaming headsets and audio suck. And more companies are now trying to follow suit. So like this MSI GH60 also has the high-res audio certification, but this one is a significantly cheaper product. And so I'm hoping that this entire uh, high-res audio badge will not come at a significant price premium because of it. So the Arctis Pro physically is almost identical to the previous Arctis pairs, but they have fixed some of my previous complaints. So you can still interchange the fabric headband. The RGB illumination is awesome with that soft perimeter glow, but the still serious logo is no longer illuminated. So they look a little bit more tasteful this way. The retractable microphone is the same with the mic mute LED, but the mic switch is larger and easier to press. The volume wheel now matches the color of the body, but it's still way too easy to spin and I always unintentionally change the volume when taking the headset on or off. And we get the refined aluminum hinge, so they are stiff enough for rotation but don't freely wobble around and they can rest on the table, flat or on your neck and now with a slightly larger angle so they don't really choke you like on the previous pairs. The side plates are now magnetic and are removable. I'm guessing we'll see some accessories for game specific side plates but this is also necessary for the wireless edition so you can access the removable battery. The headphone share port is still here here and I find it useless because, you know, listen to your own music. Comfort wise, the ear cups are thick and pleasant to the touch, but the headband is non expandable. So you can only relax the fabric piece to a point where it meets the headband. So for individuals with smaller heads, this is not a problem. And I'm personally fine with it as well. But in no way will this fit larger heads if you have lots of hair, wear a cap or a hat, and also like to wear the headset at the same time. So unfortunately, this is not an accommodating design for everyone. All right, so this is what the mic sounds like on the Arctis Pro. There's a lot of detail. It's not not too nasally you can still hear the compression because it tries to noise cancel out the background so for example right now let me type on an mx blue keyboard which are you know super loud switches you can hear them but they are slightly muted I wish there was a bit more bass in my voice uh, with this microphone, but the good thing is that if you're constantly yelling into the microphone, you can obviously adjust the volume of the microphone pickup, which you cannot do for many other headsets. What you're hearing now is the Game One headset, which I've been using as like the benchmark for microphone in this uh, field. This one has a bit more bass pickup, which I prefer. It sounds a little bit more full, but it's not as detailed uh, or clear as the Arctis Pro. Plenty of things come in the box because this is entirely modular system so replacing any broken components is easier down the line but their choice of a USB mini B8 pin cable is of course on purpose it's not a common connector and you're locked to only using the still series headsets with the included DAC. I do like their approach to the interface of the game Dacto. So it's an elegant monochrome display, not high resolution, but it's fine. It's not too bulky, it's easy to navigate, it has a good IO, but you connect the headset to the left side of the DAC, which means placement of this thing on your desk will be limiting. So for my space, it cannot be on the right because it interferes with my mouse cable. It cannot be above my keyboard because the cables are just awkward. So the only appropriate place will be on the left side where I can more comfortably route the cable. And I like my headphones and audio on the right side, so I can route it kind of like below the table. But now, because this thing on the left, I have to deal with the additional cable work, and it's just not pleasant. And there's no other way around it unless you go fully wireless with the rest of your peripherals. Now, the initial
initial setup and menu guidance for navigation is super simple. You finally choose your source and good luck, have fun. The wheel and the back button feel great with nice tactile bumps during rotation and easy presses, but the volume level starts at zero and decreases. And I found that weird because normally you'd want to turn the volume up. Now, a few things to keep in mind for that initial setup. There are two ways to adjust the volume on the headset and on the DAC. So when I plugged it in, the volume was super low, even though I was at 100% on the DAC. So make sure to adjust the volume on the headset as well if your you know, volume is super low. Second thing is that volume adjustment in Windows is locked when the DAC is plugged in. And if you want to go into the high res audio setting, uh, it will be grayed out initially. So you have to go into the Windows audio settings and choose your appropriate sample rate. So 24 bit 96 kilohertz for that to actually to show up on the deck. And you can see exactly what sample rate you have on the monochrome display. Switching sources will kill the audio for a few seconds until Windows changes that in the background. Uh, the main advantage of a PC mode is that you have the chat mix, basically allowing you to balance out the volume of your incoming voice versus in-game volume. So you can balance that out with nice visual graphic there. You can enable surround sound if you don't want to navigate into the menu. Here we also get a few EQ profiles and the custom calibration for the equalizer, the microphone side tone levels and the microphone volume, which I would suggest for you to leave at eight and have a microphone about an inch away from your face. We can even customize the RGB illumination uh, with a few color options that you can sync to the mic mute LED as well. Now you do have a bit more control inside the driver software like game sync function and saving your desired EQ settings but the software is not really required to take the full advantage of the game DAC, and I think it's uh, well thought out, so you can control everything uh, from the game DAC about the Pro. Just keep in mind that it is glossy, so keep your fingers off and have some sort of dust particle cleaner nearby because that thing gets dirty super fast. And finally, my audio experience with these has been excellent, but not exactly perfect. First, the drivers on these are incredible, not like the overly harsh treble type, but like a controlled spectrum with nice bright sound. The bass is tight, it's powerful, like goosebumps level when listening to the Blade Runner score. I love the stereo signature out of these. The layering of the different elements is impressive. In the blind test, I could not tell the difference between the high res versus PC mode. Uh, but when I actually sat down and tried to listen for the differences, knowing which one was what, I felt like the high res gave me slightly fuller treble that was less dry. So I think maybe there was something going on or could have been just a placebo, whereas in games, I was not able to hear any difference whatsoever. The important takeaway is they sound fantastic for games, whether it's for competitive, so you wanna hear every little bit of detail to know exactly what is going on in your environment, or for simple casual strategy. It's a super clean signal, it's bright, with a nice bass extension too. My only two complaints are surround sound, it's still not right for me, it pushes the mid-range way out, and the detail's compromised. You do get a slightly larger sound stage, but I prefer the detail, over feeling something a little bit further in the distance. And the second little complaint is that I wanted a little bit more power in volume. You're running these at 100% on the headset and on the DAC, listening to something epic, you know, when you want to just like turn up the volume slightly a bit more. Well, that wasn't present here. It's still very loud and it isolates everything very well, but I wanted a little bit more. All right, so conclusion time. I think the Pro name makes sense. They've done some refinements on the body, so it's slightly more premium versus the Arctis 3 or the 5 or the 7 even. Uh, and the DAC, the game DAC kind of seals the deal. It's a fantastic clean signal, uh, you know, lots of customization. It's almost driverless. You don't really need drivers for it. So as a total package, I think they've done a really good job making sure to deliver to the quality that the gamers don't really expect but it's like an audiophile, you know, high quality audio experience that is now available for gamers from a gaming company. Nice work, the catch, however, is the price. At $249, this is an expensive package, especially because it's kind of like locks you down to their own ecosystem. Let's say you cannot plug in any other headphone into this thing because it's using that USB connector aside maybe from like the Arctis 5 headset, but the DAC is not even sold separately. So if $250 is your price range, potentially look into like a standalone $99 headset with analog connections and then buy a separate DAC 
that uh, you know the hundred fifty dollars you can find plenty of those so that would be like a more open ecosystem that would complement upgradability down the line whereas this does not so share your thoughts about the Arctis Pro plus the game DAC edition stay tuned for the wireless review coming very soon I'm Dimitri make sure to check out this other relevant content subscribe for more and we'll see you in the next review